Radio Valley 99.9 FM Tune every time Say ooh Ooh From Ebola to bird flu and SARS And now it's the coronavirus Quite a bit of public concern has been simmering and growing in the last uh, month or so It's impossible these days to have any conversation uh, in public without mentioning this disease. It's gotten to a point where it's become rather uncomfortable for many of us. Uh, I fear that uh, we may be building it up into something bigger than it uh, probably is, but I am no expert. Fortunately for us here on Radio Valley um, 99.9 FM, uh, none other but uh, a public health expert, Her uh, Excellency, the Minister of Health, uh, insisted that we meet once and we have this talk and and to dispel the rumors and to get everybody on the same page. Uh, And uh, that is precisely what we're doing right here uh, over the next one, uh, over the next half an hour or so. Lumbo, thank you very much for joining us here on uh, Radio Valley. Thank you, Lumbo. Pleasure to be here. Lumbo. Um, right off, I know there's already been um, clarification from the government. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, His uh, Excellency, the, the Prime Minister, in fact, has dispelled the rumours. The, the case in Bumtang, mm-hmm. um, tell us about that. Just l- let's make it clear. Um, the case in Bumtang is negative. Negative, meaning it is not a case, actually. It's, it's not a case at right. all. And, right. and I think we have a very good opportunity to learn from this case. Last. Um, we actually, because of the rumors, we had to use our resources to prove that he's negative, mm. not to prove that he's positive. Right. She is positive. Right. You right, know. Right. So this is where I think. Um, I think before I go into it, I would first would like to thank Radio Valley for this opportunity. Nice. And and at the same time, I would like to express my solidarity to all the member states who are affected by this uh, uh, epidemic at the moment. Nice. And and of course, my prayers. Uh, for people who are um, uh, and and the family members who have died of of, of this epidemic. Nice. Um, having said that, I think like you mentioned earlier, there are there's a lot of hype built around it, and people might understand that coronavirus is not new. Mm. The strain that we have at the moment is new. So right. that's why we have the noble coronavirus. Mm. Because we don't know what kind of strain it is. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like any flu virus. So if you look at, for example, the signs and symptoms of coronavirus, there's nothing uh, v- different Less. Than, than flu. Mm. So it is basically, if you look at it, fever, cough, sore throat, shortness of breath, that's it. Mm. So, so it's, it's not a really a new, new disease per se, mm. because the signs and symptoms are same as a flu. So if somebody, if you have a very good immune system, um, if you're doing well, if you have minimal exposure, you should absolutely be fine. Less. It is just that people feel, you know, we have seen uh, videos go viral mm-hmm. where you say, oh, I'm hit by coronavirus and you are dead mm. on the floor. I think this uh, will absolutely not happen. Right. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Limbo, we call this is a novel coronavirus, they say, mm. or, or a group of viruses, so it's coronaviruses. Right. They're, and the other thing is it's, it's zoonotic. It, it, it can be transferred yes. from yes. animals to yes. uh, human beings. And there are many of these strains that are still with animals that haven't infected humans yes. yet. Um, so we need to dispel the rumors about that. Mm. The fact that it's there, it's mm. there. And also the other thing, as you mentioned, Limbo, it certainly seems uh, globally right now that most of the people who fall fallen victim to it mm. um, and uh, in cases where it's become lethal, mm. most of those are uh, cases where it was the infirm or mm. people who were extremely old, mm. uh, people who had respiratory mm. uh, complications. It seems to be the majority of the cases seem to yes. be those. And the ones that uh, seem to be dealing with it uh, pretty fine, uh, mm. at least up until now, um, are, like you said, are ordinary people like ourselves. Mm. If you're um, reasonably strong and if, if you have a strong uh, immune system or if, you, if your immune system is, is fine, it's, it's normal average also, most mm. people seem to be able to deal with it. Mm. Is that is that true? Yes, that's mm. absolutely true. Because even if you look at, there are no definite uh, studies at this point, but mm. uh, recently Lancet came out with uh, five published studies and nice. that itself shows that you know almost more than half of the infected cases had other comorbidities what we call 
So mm. people were either having their immune system was compromised, mm. they had other chronic diseases. So that exacerbated uh, the the problem, and uh, that's where the mortality is happening. Now people must understand that in case of death, um, none of the affected countries have reported death. So the most of the deaths that have happened are in the Yuhan province. As right of now. Right. Uh, yeah. In fact, I, I was looking at uh, the WHO report from uh, yesterday, um, 31st. Uh, it says uh, 9,826 confirmed. Um, 900, majority of them, of course, in, in mm-hmm. China. 9,720 9, confirmed in China. They suspect 15, about some, something more than 15,000. Mm-hmm. Um, Severe cases, about 1,500, yeah. uh, 213 deaths, and that's all in China. Mm. Outside of China, there have been 106 uh, confirmed mm. uh, cases in 19 countries. Mm. Um, and just that, for us, it's, it's rather disconcerting because China is right next door. Mm. And then some of the countries where it's been uh, quite widespread or relatively we're seeing, say Singapore, you know, these are countries that a lot of people yes yeah, go to thailand singapore has 13 mm-hmm. thailand 14 uh, we've heard about the case in mm-hmm. nepal mm-hmm. and then uh, india as well so uh, i suppose that's why everyone's getting this the sense of alarm mm-hmm. uh, if you really look at the numbers i mean who knows what it's going to become, become. right we don't know yet like you said there's there's nothing definite mm-hmm. about it right now mm-hmm. um but there's this something about human beings la, mm. where if we sense something bad, it's very easy to, for it to become a public uh, mania. Sort of. mm. this, 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 it's very easy for mm. people to yeah, bring it, mm. build it up into something much bigger than it is. Uh, it's quite normal for people to do that. And I think that's exactly what's happening right now. Mm. I mean, of course, concerns are definite. Mm-hmm. I, I, I put up this post uh, this uh, morning asking people to tell me what, you know, they wanted to ask. Most of them seem to be about containing the disease. Mm-hmm. Um, what are we doing at the moment? La? I think if, if, uh, if we say if you want to really stop this epidemic from coming to Bhutan, I think that would be a wrong objective because it it will be very very challenging right epidemiologically it's not possible right but as much as possible we have to be prepared so i always say there's a very thin line between urgency and crisis okay urgency yes there is an urgency is it in crisis not really Mm. we haven't had a single case as of now right Urgency, we have to have a good preparedness plan. And this is what Ministry of Health in the last um, almost a month has been focused on. So if you look at what we have done so far, the 30th uh, December was when uh, the coronavirus was declared. Mm -hmm. And right around one week, uh, right after that, we actually... uh, reworked our our surveillance so we already have existing surveillance so we built uh, you know we started surveillance system at the international airport immediately this was even you know before uh, we knew that uh, India for example Nepal were infected they came much later Mm -hmm. so even prior to that we started our surveillance at the airport right and then right after the surveillance then we started on the 15th to be specific to on the 15th of January we started really active public notification okay on you know we did uh, multimedia uh, so we try to reach out to public through uh, media channels um, and really communicating the risks of this this virus and then if you look at around uh, mid of uh, this week we had our coordination meeting on the 21st uh, to really work on a contingency plan okay. so as of now i'm happy to inform the nation that we have a good contingency plan at the moment we have we have instituted screening on at all five point of entries in our borders Plus. And there we are screening people and if we do find someone who has the symptoms we have identified in the hospital designated rooms where they will be quarantined and where the test will happen where the observations will happen okay so similarly in all 
five uh, places we have uh, uh, identified health facilities and then JDWNRH and Thimphu, the, the old MCH unit, the whole of the building is converted into an OPT, intensive care, so and quarantine. Thus. So if you look at it, so anybody, if, if there is, imagine an outbreak in Funsuling, mm-hmm. the idea is that if you see, so somebody entering Thimphu gate, the Funsuling gate, we find that he is symptomatic. Mm. We are immediately going to take him to Funsuling hospital and there's a designated room and a place and there he will be examined. Now, if he is clinically symptomatic, we will take samples and the sample will be sent to RCDC, the Center for Disease Control Laboratory. And this is the only place where we have uh, what we call uh, a sophisticated lab to, to analyze. Okay. And the sample will be sent here. And then this person will be quarantined till we get the sample, uh, the the confirmation. confirmation, And that will take about two to three hours. But till then, he will not be going out. He will Mm. be staying at the Funzling Hospital. When, if he, if his result comes back negative, then we will probably advise him on on really managing his flu. Then that's just a flu. Mm -hmm. And then if it's positive, then he will be quarantined in the hospital and he'll be managed in the in the hospital Last. now in case if his condition worsens then he will be airlifted to the icu here okay so the preparedness plan is 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 really in place Last. in each district it, in each point of entries mm. we have identified two sets of teams health workers who will be attending to who will be responding to the epidemic in case if we have one and these are by contact numbers we have specified by name and contact information okay so we have these teams deployed in all the five point of entries and similarly we have gone further and actually if they get exhausted then we will have other deployment so we have identified that as well plus so plus. in case we have a case and becomes complicated everything is in place plus. so we really want to assure the nation that Ministry of Health is doing its best. I think my team, we have spent hours, we have been leaving office around 9, 10, 11, midnight. Laboratory people are there even till midnight. Thus. So we are trying our best. Thus. And this is where we are requesting public to, to you know, really, uh, it's not time to spread rumors. Last, last. It creates a lot of confusion. Mm-hmm. So I, if I may discuss about the case you were mentioning earlier right. yes. about this lady from Bumtang. Right. You know, there was a public rumor that she was she was positive. Mm-hmm. She she had coronavirus. Mm-hmm. She was checked in in the hospital in the hotel, and then there was the rumor was so big that we said, okay, just uh, we, we'll just run to show that she's negative. We knew she was re- negative because yes. she had no symptoms. Okay. And and. No, clinically she was okay. Okay. But then there were, the rumor was so strong mm. that we had to prove. Mm. But, but you know, similarly, you know, she's, she's a guest in our country. Right. La. And she's staying in a hotel. And because of these rumors, the hotel staffs got a bit anxious. Mm. You know, they didn't know how to deal with it. And, of course, the hotel owners plus the uh, other guests as well seen these things on social media mm. then they, they, everybody is panicking for right. no reason right right so my my uh, staffs they were there analyzing the result till um, almost till 10 o'clock last okay and then we had to inform that she was negative but mm. we knew all along she was going to be negative mm. but yet because of this public panic right so that just goes to show you uh, that Probably it's, it's natural to, to human beings, but mm. that element of fear, you know, it can mm. drive us to, to all sorts of things. Um, so in this case, for example, I mean, she didn't really have the symptoms. And yet it was so easy for you know half the nation to think that hey, we have a case here uh, in Bhutan. Mm. Now, uh, I am also very happy to hear, Limbo, from you that we have a good contingency plan uh, in place. Mm. Um, However, a lot of the concerns right now seem to be about the detection. Mm. Um, you're saying we have a detection system in place. Mm. I have a friend who was, in fact, recently in Wuhan mm. and in Vietnam. Mm. And when he came back, he said there was hardly any screen for him mm. at the airport. Mm. 
mm. and when did he come back uh, maybe about a week ago mm. you know and uh, he himself said it was rather disappointing for me to see that mm. it was so easy for me to just walk in without getting you know mm. so he was a little concerned about that mm. at the same time today we uh, we're seeing um um a lot of people say even in the airlines uh, industry mm. um crews crew mm. members in fact i met mm. a crew member yesterday mm. who was saying that he doesn't feel like flying mm. you know um he thinks it's it's risky and mm. uh and it's not just him you know the mm. others are also mm. are aren't too happy about mm. uh, having to work right now mm. um so there is a great deal of public concern right mm. now mm. Uh, especially with uh, people who are in the business of traveling uh, back and forth uh, to some of these uh, countries that are on the the red list mm. um how also given the fact that there is a gestation period i'm not sure if that's the correct term but mm. you know you can detect incubation. it after incubation period yes of 2 to 14 days mm. they say uh i am sure detection is still rather tricky mm. it's a it's a hidden mm. hidden go right mm. or is it an exact science it is it is not an exact science per se but mm. like any other flu no uh, first i want to actually clarify the one at the airport because we have also received a lot of queries on it yes. and we have actually tried to clarify these concern through our social media page as mm. well ministry of health people you know moment they land at the airport they think there is somebody with a gun and pointing at Lass. each and every one okay. that is not true okay. we actually have scanners on build so as ah. you deboard the plane and enter the arrival mm. terminal there are at the door there are infrareds okay. and they that that is what you are being scanned automatically ah. so that is actually recommended for okay. mass screening Lass. so that it's just eases up Yeah, yeah, yeah the convenience Rather so people have somebody stick a gun in your gun face you know your face so people <laughs> yes. don't see that and <laughs> right. they think oh how come ministry has yes. not instituted yes. i was not scanned i have right. not seen a health worker okay. so okay. there seems to be that confusion Lass. and i really want to clarify that these screenings are done automatically Lass. and and secondly if we do find mm. somebody who has high fever mm. then that actually a person is taken away from the line and then there is a room next to it where he or she will uh, be quarantined mm. temporarily and all the specimen collection and clinical validations will happen assessment okay. will happen last, last. and then he is you know if everything goes well then he is let uh, out last so last. i think that is what people are not seeing right right now what we have done at the point of entry say in funsuling mm. is with the gun Okay. So people think oh Punsuling has an airport doesn't have. Mm. Ideally we would like to have a s- automatic scanner, mm-hmm. a thermal scanner there as well in Punsuling. Okay. And this is what we are working to us right now. Okay. So we hope to install that at the earliest Last. so that it doesn't strain our health system mm-hmm. in terms of using the health resources to mm-hmm. check Last. the fever. Last. So we, that should be done automatically. A person sits there in the computer and then the computer picks it up. Lass. It's really the the concept of artificial intelligence. Okay. okay. But I I I've seen I, you're absolutely correct. I have seen many posts on Facebook mm. saying airport has not started. I have right. personally received many messages mm. saying that they have not seen uh screening done at mm. the airport. So on the communication and the fear aspect I absolutely agree with you. I think there is a lot of fear. Mm-hmm. Um and I I really want to assure that if you practice good hygiene, hand hygiene, you wash your hands, cover your mouth, you know, basic etiquette, cough etiquette, mm-hmm. have good food, you should be absolutely safe. Plus uh, uh, certainly la I also realize that a lot of people are just depending on information that they get from each other mm. uh on messenger or facebook or whatever mm. it is. Um I would strongly suggest that people actually go to credible websites like you know the World Health Organization mm. and yeah. look at the uh, you know because look it's your family's it's your own mm. personal health mm. all of that that you're concerned about so mm. take the necessary precautions take the necessary steps don't just depend on Uh, what you hear on social media because a lot of it is bogus as, mm. as well you, know, you can get wrong information on mm. social media mm. so go to credible websites and get the right information i'm mm. sure uh, 
I think absolutely, and I think this is where we are. We would like to request the public to to visit the Ministry of Health website. Right. We have created right. a separate uh, 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 pop up window so mm. that you can really view what is known about this virus as the science evolves. We are we are updating the nation, yes. and then similarly on the Facebook as well. On the Facebook, we are updating the epidemiological data. So which countries are affected by it? Where? How many numbers? How many numbers have died? So these updates, Ministry of Health, we get it around 10 p.m. Uh, in the evening. Yes. So then we would start updating by seven in the morning. Okay. Uh, on on all our pay, uh, documents. Last, yeah. last. So this is how we are. Uh, we would like uh, country to get the information from um, things as of now, as we speak. Something that we still don't know is the source of this virus. Last. You know, so it is still yes, you have bat, but inter intermediary host is not still confirmed. Mm. One, two. We still don't have a rapid test kit. So anywhere in the world, not anywhere, just here. Yeah, anywhere not just in the world, not right. just in Bhutan. There is no rapid test kit, so yes, yes. nobody can come to you and uh, immediately test you and say, "Oh, you're fine," yes. or, "Or you're okay." Yes. We please explain this. Yes, la. and so people think that oh, you take the sample, put prick, and then it will show negative, positive. It's mm. not like that. It has to go through what we call technically, it is called um, RT PCR. You yes. know, so it is it is a reverse transcriptive polymerized chain. Reaction, so it is basically sequencing the gene of the uh, the virus. Last. So it is a process that okay. we have to do. So that there is no rapid test kit. Mm-hmm. You draw the blood and you put it in there, and you said you are positive or negative. Mm. It doesn't happen like it's that. It's not like your alcohol testing the cops to. No, like, no, no. So there <laughs> is no it. test. So if somebody says there is a mm. test, uh, it is That's not bogus. true. Last. So CDC is is planning to come up. With these kind of tests, probably within 10 to 14 days, we Lass. are not sure. Lass. But uh, then WHO will pre-qualify and actually supply to the member states okay. that we don't have treatment. Mm. There is no treatment as such. Mm. I have also got many calls saying, "Is Bhutan going to buy uh, medicine for coronavirus?" Mm. There is no tablet that can cure coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is just we just have to manage the symptoms, mm-hmm. and the symptoms are pretty much like flu, right. common flu. Right. So you just have to manage the mm. uh, the symptom uh, sy- symptoms, and there is no tablet that will cure um, coronavirus. Last. So these are few things that people must understand because I think we have had many queries saying uh, Bhutan is still not buying the test kits. And and for testing using the what we call RT PCR test, we do have reagents in RCDC. This is our Apex Laboratory, public mm-hmm. health laboratory in the country. So we do have enough reagents to test, and we have reference laboratory in Thailand as well, where we actually, at the professional level, we have conversation on a daily basis to really understand this virus. Does. So even if we don't have the if Competency, uh, uh, capacity, expertise. We are relying on on our collaborating partners. Last. So Last. I think these people must get it clear because everybody is saying, "Oh, we are delaying in buying medicine for coronavirus," mm. and there is no medicine, there is medicine. Uh, for coronavirus. Last. Last. Thank you. Last. So oh, it's official. There has been no case reported here uh, in the country. Um, I don't think we need to be all that alarmed, but definitely. The effects of it are certainly being felt um, in our social lives, mm. our psychological health, uh, and more so, I think, uh, on the economy as well. Mm. Um, for example, uh, people in the travel industry, mm. which basically is the second last contributor to mm. the exchequer, are rather concerned. Mm. Hoteliers are saying, perhaps, you know. Banks should be able to, you know, f- forego their interests uh, on their loans, on the mm. hotel loans, because mm. I mean, if you have to, nobody comes in, mm. and um, you still have to have your hotel open. You have overheads of, you know, ten, fifteen lakhs uh, uh, every month, and you have to pay your interest and keep the hotel open. N- impossible. You close your hotel down. Mm. That means th- you know, thousands of uh, people working mm. in the industry mm. will be out of jobs. Mm. Um, There needs to be a very uh, everybody needs to chip in. I think somehow mm. or the other. Mm. There is a big lesson to be learned over here. Mm. I think 
you know from a, an outbreak like this or the news of the outbreak um the lesson that i i feel and perhaps as a public health uh, person with a public health background you will be able to shed some light what it has done at certainly for us i think is made us understand the value of taking care of your own place of your health uh, all of that uh, many of us we tend to believe that okay as long as i'm living you know my compound is clean and i throw my garbage into my neighbor's <laughs> uh, compound or down on the street or in the drain i'm okay i'm going i'm going to be fine and today is a situation where we find that you know this world is far too connected you may live in, uh, in whatever isolation you think you live but no if you don't take care of you know your own backyard um, if you don't take care of people around you that possibly don't matter to you but still you know if you really think about it they do matter and if you don't take care of you know people around you and the place around you then you could have things like this come up right and your children will go out of your compound and they get infected and the the point that i'm trying to make of here mm. is that we're learning that all of us need to chip and take care of each other true true mm. i think i think that's it's so well put it because i think like i said it's it's like any other flu if you have good immune system if you have if you take on a regular basis you exercise you maintain your health you eat right mm. you're healthy plus you are conscious of 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 your health you should be absolutely fine right now on the other side this is really uh, an an epi- it's an epidemic it is it, it we should allow the signs to evolve Lust. and not the fear mm mm-hmm. Last, no? last, last. And then this idea of global solidarity, you know, so right? It's an epidemic, so mm. it's not confined to a village or a confined to a community. That it can, it has the potential. It has actually become a pandemic. It mm. is affecting the whole of the world, mm. and this is where all of us has to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. So similarly, on 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 interventions, Ministry of Health has. all the contingency plans and strategies in place we are trying to mobilize resources have it there but then everybody needs to pitch in their right, part right, as well right. as at the individual level at the community level mm-hmm. at the at the multi stakeholder level and right. for that i think uh, very recently probably uh, for for i think four days ago um the prime minister actually activated our national disaster committee as well Lost. and and this is a committee that is uh, actually called upon during uh, the national crisis Lost. but but this is really to to activate so that we get uh, that everybody is on the same page right right that if we are if ministry of health is doing something that everybody is informed what is happening mm-hmm. so that all as a citizen of of the country that we are all on board and Lost. that we are all having the same objective mm-hmm. which is to really minimize the impact of this epidemic on Lost. our country Lost. be that on at the individual level at the health level at the economic level right. so this is should be the objective mm-hmm. so loss loss um obviously this fact is not lost on you or mm. the other members of of the cabinet mm. but this is a government that is headed by a doctor yes right so the expectations obviously are very high mm. um and i'm I, i don't want to scare monger again mm. and and I, that's certainly not my objective mm. but do you realize i'm sure you all realize mm. that you have to get everything right yes you have to yes. not just because it's your responsibility mm. but also because people will be very unforgiving if anything goes mm. wrong i'm just saying mm. if that's a big 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 if mm. if anything should go wrong people mm. will be very unforgiving mm. because of the very fact that the prime minister himself is mm. is a doctor mm. um and the health minister also has a background in in uh public uh health la yes plus i think these people must understand that um in case of an epidemic preparedness is very important plus preparedness okay. and having a good contingency plan now stopping a case coming in okay. like i said earlier it will be impossible plus or if if, if, if it happens if it happens mm. and when if an outbreak happens we will do all our we will mobilize all our resources expertise to to really mitigate mm. these risks mm. 
but now we can't say it's going to be a risk free and uh, you mm. know it's 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 just not possible yes, to yes. guarantee such a thing yes, yes. but if you look at preparedness i think we have been it's fair to say i, I not as uh, the health minister but right. as a public health professional right. we have actually been a bit ahead of the epidemic okay. uh, we have started our screening we have started uh, public messaging public notification travel advisories right. so if you look at the timelines when we have started these interventions we are actually uh, you know little bit ahead of the epidemics and trying to prepare ourselves nice. so in terms of an epidemic outbreak preparedness is very important okay that you have a good contingency plan if things happen mm. you know well and it well thought through and Last. which we have Last. technically sound and practically doable mm. preparedness plans in mm. in place i must uh, actually share this even as we speak this morning you must have seen also the prime minister himself and myself we went through the whole routine of if we had if we have a case at jdw how mm. this is going to ma- be managed how it's going to go around and do the screening detections management everything so we went through the whole routine to really understand that that we we didn't we don't have any weak uh, linkages plus you know so Plus. it's it's uh, it's uh, we have uh, a really good contingency uh, plan um, right and right um so it's pretty unrealistic on people's part to think that you know you have this all of a sudden you have this magic portion that you know everything's mm-hmm. going to be fine and mm-hmm. everything we cannot see emola Th- no. this this is something that even the entire world is grappling mm-hmm. with it uh, yes. right now yes. and for us also if it all it should come mm. we will deal with it i'm yes. sure in, in our own ways yes. but we have a contingency plan in place yes. right now the thing is uh limbo i, I also understand from what you're saying right mm. now that the government is preparing mm. um for the fallout of it as well mm. in the sense of the, the economic fallout of mm. it all of that and we understand that all of us must you know chip in somehow or the other mm. can life go on as normal i mean what should schools stay open Uh, February is the time when laborers come mm. you know uh, from India and the you know, construction starts picking up mm. all of that should all of that happen as normal mm. and i think this is uh, i want to echo what prime minister had said uh, yesterday in the me- press meet, uh, meet the press yes. as well is that it's an epidemic right so we really don't know when it will happen how it will happen mm. so there is lot of uncertainty right so for us you know we can only plan to the best Less. of how this disease evolves okay so as the Fair disease enough. evolve then we need to re-strategize Less. our our action okay so it our reaction would really be contingent upon how this epidemic is evolving Less. and we f- for once keeping a very close eye on how this epidemic is evolving Less. Less. and and we are in constant touch with who uh, not only the country office but the regional office as well at mm. the headquarters and 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 this is where we really have to be guided by the signs mm-hmm. and and not the fear Right, right. I understand the fear. I mean, no matter mm. how well educated you mm. are and how much you read up, mm. it's normal for mm. for us uh, mm. to feel fear. Mm. But uh, really, I think this is a time where where reason needs to dominate more mm. than more than anything else, mm. Mushla. Mm. Because I mean, you can unnecessarily create a situation mm. where all of a sudden everybody's down you have, everybody's psychological health is, mm. is is affected unnecessarily because yes. who knows i mean we this thing might never come here also you know <laughs> you very, yes yeah the chances are there yes, you know yes. uh, we're seeing that all different countries are pulling together mm. there's a concerted global effort yes. uh, collective effort globally yes. to 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 contain mm. it and to deal with it and with all the brains uh, and the resources that this world has i'm sure something could be done uh, quite yes. uh, i hope at least i mm. hope at least right but for the moment for the moment let's the simple things that people can do in mm. their everyday lives is mm. to just take the precautionary yes. measures much like yes. yes. like washing your hands yes. staying yes. um rehydrating mm. yourself every now and then yes. um but otherwise life i suppose should go on as as normal i'm, I'm trying to live I, as I, carefully I, as possible i i absolutely agree and That's and something that again i we want to request is you know if you have been to any of the affected countries That's in the region india nepal for pilgrimages and if you if you have you know symptoms mm-hmm. if you have fever if you have cough please call 112 112 
and 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 we will we will arrange for you to come we will take the travel history we will as do an assessment and do a testing nice. because sometimes people come you know people go there they don't want to reveal so they go straight to the village so if if you have any family members who have been recently been to recently mm-hmm. not last year mm-hmm. or few months back okay. that is absolutely okay because okay. the incubation period is from 2 to 10 days right yeah. so by if you are infected within the 2 to 10 days the symptoms should show up loss loss and if you have a travel history then you need to connect that and the symptom your travel history and your symptom and then you have to collect these two dots okay then you need to come for testing ah okay no loss but if you had no travel history if you have not been outside your village mm. if you have not met anybody who has been to these affected countries this absolutely nothing to worry about loss it could just be a flu right it could be a yes. flu Um, so but if you if you have these two then then this is how we are defining our case at the moment loss loss you know so then you have to come and okay. this is where we are requesting people because um, you know the biggest challenge as of now is you know if they are coming by air it's much more easier to mm. control but if they are say coming in from our borders they're going to nepal coming in through funsuling mm. it is a challenge it's a practical challenge because there is no proper system right right for monitoring how many people are in nepal mm-hmm, mm-hmm. At, as of now you know so, so this this will become a challenge for us right. so that's why we are saying if you have been to any of the affected countries you know in in say in the last one month please get in touch with us mm. um, and i think you can come forward and we'll do all the test then you know you'll have a peace of mind right and i think it's important to stay composed more i mean uh. like for example i get that horrible feeling nowadays mm. um that even if, if i sneeze a little bit i'm i'm thinking um hold on a second you know mm. it's that psychological fear um so you could possibly get a normal flu right yes. and if you do get a normal flu it's like you said uh, your travel history Science all of yes. that yeah m- maybe look back into you know who you might have met all uh. of that also yeah, but stay calm stay yes. calm and take the proper medication take the uh, uh, proper precautionary measures or whatever or, or you know proper medication i mm-hmm. suppose uh, and take care of yourself and if at all uh, you have doubts after your calculations of travel mm-hmm. history this that mm-hmm. then go, call 112 and uh, get the necessary thing and even if if by a very 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 remote chance mm-hmm. it was you know determined that you have it and mm-hmm. you're the bhutan's first uh, case chances are m- the biggest chances are y- you live through it yes <laughs> yes yes uh, absolutely last, right yes. so let's just establish this then la. one there are no cases reported in bhutan yes. as of yet two screening is being done at all the entry points yes Uh, so don't worry about that just mm. because you don't see anybody doesn't you know mean. yeah it doesn't mean yeah so there's infrared scanners right. all of that right okay um and most uh, importantly I, i think at the moment don't cause unnecessary hysteria yes. at the moment yes. let let's as you said let logic and facts prevail yes don't let mania prevail yes i think that's important right yes. now Mushla. thank you last last thank you for summarizing it <laughs> last okay <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's important to get this information mm, yes, out there yes, so thank yes, you so much yes. limbo for i mean is there anything else that you would like to add i think everything is covered thank Lass. you very much thank you very much limbo uh, it's a uh, i think absolutely is necessary for people to be hearing more from mm. people like yourselves mm. uh, like yourself and you know health authorities mm. to and of course from the government as well uh, and you certainly doing that thank mm. you so much for taking this uh, time out so that we dispel the rumors mm. and let logic prevail mm. thank you very much for the opportunities and i also want to uh, inform the public that i think uh, radio valley has personally taken an initiative to develop a jingle i am told to be announced on uh, on on air and for that i think uh, on behalf of the ministry of health we are extremely grateful for your gesture it's 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 really um, we're very grateful thank you thank you very much la thank you very much Right then, it's a wrap here on uh, this uh, conversation we've had uh, to dispel the rumors and let logic prevail uh, about the coronavirus or coronaviruses. Technically, that's that's the correct way. Right. Um, thank you very much, Lemo. And uh, just take care of yourselves. In any case, 
don't cause unnecessary panic like my friend uh, ganchu who's in the next room says quite often don't panic it's organic <laughs>